I'm Dr. Jacob Larson, and this is Read, Write, and Sight, the show where I teach you how to read, write, and sight for your college classes. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to write a paper in Microsoft Word or any similar word processing program like that. I'm going to I'm going to start with the story. Um, when I was in college, I thought it was pretty smart. I thought it was pretty good with computers. I'd, I'd done a lot of papers, countless papers. It was probably my junior, maybe even my senior year of college. I was uh, I was over at my brother-in-law's house writing a paper, and I didn't I I didn't know how to put page numbers on my page. I was just typing it, and and uh, this is a total waste of time. I didn't even know that there was an easy way to do it. So my brother-in-law, he's like, hey, why don't you do this? Boom does it real fast and like, oh, oh, I didn't know you could do that. And so some of the things I'm going to go through, maybe they're uh, super easy. Maybe they're not, but I'm going to go through things that I think everybody needs to know um, to write papers. I'll talk about the difference between MLA, APA, because they're the most common probably, and uh, hopefully help you out a little bit. Okay, so I've got Microsoft uh, Word 2016. This is at the end of 2018. 2019 is slowly coming out, but I've got Office 2016 on my computer right now, and it's got a lot of great features to really help students do well. As you notice, I went to open up a new one, a new document, and there's a template right there to do an MLA style paper. I could just click on that, and it's going to have all the formatting done for me. Likewise, I could find a template because they have templates for APA and I just click on it and it'll be set. Now this is gonna be stock, um, MLA or APA, just the, the basic core rules with a bunch of samples to kind of show you what it looks like. That's what Michael, uh, Microsoft Word has done. But let's say your teacher gives you a different rule and they're like, I want you to use this font and this font size and this spacing and, and they start giving you some specifics which maybe don't follow these rules. I'm going to show you how to fix all those things. So let's do it. We're going to start with the blank document and uh, go from there. One thing to be aware of when we're, uh, we're getting started is you don't have to pay for Microsoft Word to have access to it. Here's the cool thing. Anybody can get a free Microsoft account. It's the same account you use if you have an Xbox. Um, if you have a email through Microsoft, it's all the same account. You can get it for free and it's gonna give you a certain amount of storage. With that, you can just log into the website and get free access. The same is also true with Google. Um, I'm not gonna be talking about Google today, I'm gonna be talking about this, but you can get this for free. If you are a college student, there's a chance that your institution um, may have free access to Word for you, something that they've paid for, um, or you know Google Docs or something like that. So you don't necessarily have to pay for it to have access to it, but most word processors are gonna be pretty close on how they work. So I'm gonna cover the basics and hopefully that helps. All right, so I've got a blank document here. If I was going to uh, set this up for a paper, the first thing I probably wanna do is double space it. So we need to know how to double space. This icon right here that has the arrows going up and down, it's the line and paragraph spacing icon. And in newer word processors, you're gonna have a button like this. Um, older ones, you may have to go into paragraph settings to adjust it, but I'll show you both ways. So I can click here and it's gonna give me options. And if I go 2.0, everything's gonna be double spaced. That's it. Now, there doesn't look like there's a difference, but the entire document at this point is double spaced. So if I type uh, name, class, it skips the space in between. Now, why double space? This is tradition um, for printed out documents, for just historically typewritten documents on a typewriter. Uh, teachers wanted space to write in between lines. And so that's why they ask for double spacing. Uh, many teachers, more and more, they're not printing out work or they're not taking printed work. Everything's done on computers. More and more, 
And so maybe someday double spacing will go away, but for now it's pretty normal. So it's important to know how to do that. Let's talk about fonts and font size. Okay, so right now you can see Microsoft has automatically chosen a font called Calibri and they put it at size 11 font. What if your teacher wants something different? You know, if they're like, everything has to be Times New Roman size 12. Well, then you need to know how to change that. Go up to your font and you're going to be able to choose from a list. I clicked on it. You can, uh, you can scroll down. You can also type the first letter and it's going to get you closer. So I clicked Times New Roman. It's adjusted it. I'm going to click here while everything is selected and choose size 12. So from here on out, because everything in the document was selected, everything will be double spaced. Everything will be Times New Roman. Everything will be uh, 0.12 font size. That's pretty standard. Um, I, most teachers probably aren't going to argue if you do that. Not everyone's going to require that, but that was the standard for a long time. So your teachers may expect it. Okay. All right. From here, we're going to talk about how to do what I didn't know how to do, which is add page numbers. Now in Microsoft Word, you can go up to insert and it's going to change this top part of the page, which is called a ribbon. I don't know how they came up with this name, but it's called a ribbon. And you're going to see there's a section here for headers, footers, and page numbers. Page number is basically automated text that shows up in either the top or the bottom of the page. Things that you put in the header, they're going to show up on the top of every page. Things that you put in the footer, they're going to show up at the bottom of every page. In uh, academic papers, you don't... All the repeat uh, content is going to show up in the header. So you could click here, but what we want is we want it to show up over and over again. So what we really want is to just add a page number instead of typing in text. Because if I type text, the text is going to repeat, but it's not going to update for each page. So that's not what I want. What I want is a page number. So I'm going to click page number. And I'm going to have the option for top of the page, bottom of the page. I could stick it off into the page margins or something like that. I'm going to put it in the top and it gives me some options. Now they have a lot of options which are kind of fancy. Um, academic papers aren't calling for fancy. APA doesn't ask for it. MLA doesn't ask for it. Unless your teacher asks for it, don't do it. Because you're, uh, you're not following a standardized rule. So I want mine in the right hand corner. So I'm going to click on that. Now, what it's showing me is there's this dotted line, which will not show up on the document. And it's showing me the separation between what's being typed in the document and what's showing up at the top. Now, I can choose whether the, the first page or odd even pages are different. That way, when you have pages that face each other, things are different. Academic papers don't really care about that. That's more for fancier formatting. So you don't need to mess with that. But what you do know, yeah, maybe you need to type your name. Uh, MLA and APA both ask for this, so I'm going to type my last name, and boom. But you'll notice it's not the same font, so again, I'm going to have to change it. Now, what's in gray here, that is being automated. If I delete that, it will disappear and it won't show up on all my pages. I'm going to select all of it, and you see it's highlighting it differently because it's uh, some automated text. Whatever the page number is, that's the number that shows up there. I've highlighted everything. I can go back or I can, uh, if I'm in Word, I can right click and there's things that you can do. But, man, my computer's going slow. It's got a lot to think about. Okay, here in the latest couple versions of Word, this little prompt shows up automatically. Right from here, I can choose Times New Roman and I can go to 12 so that it's consistent with the rest of my document. Now when I'm done, I just double click off and that's it. I don't have to worry about it. Now it grays it out. It won't be grayed. It's just showing you this is not active right now. You're not actually messing with it. But I've got my last name, page number, my last name because I typed it. It's going to be the same on every page. But my page number, it's going to update automatically. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's say I need to do a title. So we need to know how to justify your font or your, uh, your cursor or your typing to different parts of the page. In academic papers, you're either all the way to the left or your center. 
or you hit tab once or twice. That's it. Those are the only options right now. It's all the way to the left. I need to center it. So I can click here and boom, it's centered. You can tell this shows the text to the left. This shows it centered. This is right justified. And this is a block justify. So it tries to keep the margins even. Uh, unless you're doing fancy documenting, you, you probably don't need that. Academic papers, they don't care. So I can just type uh, title, hit enter, and it's going to keep that. But if I want to go back, I just hit that and I'm good. Or I can also just hit delete and it knows to go back automatically. Um, and both MLA and APA, you just hit tab. Tab's automatically going to, uh, to jump ahead a specified uh, amount of space. With what we've talked about already, you don't have to hit tab a bunch of times to get to center and you don't have to hit space a bunch of times to, to indent. You just hit justify it the way you need to or you hit tab. Does that make sense? Hopefully this is not new to you and you're like, well, yeah, I know how to do this. And that's great. You probably wouldn't have clicked on this video to begin with. But if, if you did, hopefully these are things to help. In my last video, we talked about Grammarly, how you can install Grammarly as an add-in to, uh, to double check your, your spelling, your punctuation, your grammar. Um, if you want to know how to do that, you can just check out that video. I'll link it here so that you can get to it. But Microsoft does have really good stuff to begin with to be able to check if something's wrong. So if something is underlined in red, then red means it's misspelled. So I can right click and it gives me an option. Oh, well, you need to adjust spelling. It doesn't have a suggestion because it's not anywhere close to a real world, real word. I can, uh, I can ignore it. I can ignore any time that this word shows up, or I can add it to my dictionary. Now, there's times that words are, you know, something that you use consistently, but maybe Microsoft doesn't have it in its dictionary. Well, like my last name, it thinks my last name is misspelled. If I went in and I, uh, if I marked add to dictionary, then it wouldn't bug me again. So if you're, you're using a computer that you control, your personal computer, work computer, um, that might be something you want to do. Otherwise... Uh, you can search it. You can do other things. Okay. All right. So some of the other features that are built into Microsoft Word that could be really helpful for a college student is the References tab. So if I click up at the top, it's going to give me some options so I can create a table of contents, which is not really something we do in MLA very often, but it might be something you have to do in an APA paper. When I was writing my dissertation, I had to use this a ton and it was tricky. If you need to add footnotes, this is a great spot to do that. If you need to be able to research a topic, you can do that here. And if you need to help with citations, this can help you out here. You can also change it from APA to MLA to Chicago to different source styles, right? And this is showing the seventh edition for MLA. Currently, MLA is on eighth, so you'd want to double check to make sure that you're accurate. Um, you can insert uh, different um, content and things like that. These are just some of the things that you probably... Actually, let me do one more thing. These are some of the things that you need to know in Microsoft Word. Another might be to do a hanging indent. So let's say I'm doing a citation. I've got the person's last name and like initial or something like that, right? Um... Or something like that. And let's say I go off to another line. So I'm just going to copy this over and over. Control, if you're on a PC, Control C copies selected text. Control V pastes it. On uh, a Mac, it's Command C, Command V. Same thing. Okay. So I, I'm just trying to get text onto a second line. Sorry about that. Okay. But maybe you need to have what's called a hanging indent. That is to where after one line is there, the next line indents automatically. Now you can do this manually by putting the cursor here, hitting enter and hitting tab. That's a pain, it's not the best way to do it and it changed my spacing. But if I select this and I want to go into, um, to adjust it 
manually so that it's automatic, I can go up to my paragraph settings. Okay, when I hit, I was trying to find it up in the top and I don't know where it went. Microsoft's adjusting things as they as they iterate previous versions, you'd just be able to find it at the top. But I hit right click and I get the options for paragraph settings. If I open up paragraph, then I'm gonna be able to adjust the indentation, which is right here. So I can manually type it in or under special, I could just choose first line, so it'll indent the first line automatically. Or I can do a hanging indent, which is what we need for citation uh, pages, your reference pages, your works cited pages, things like that. So I'm gonna click OK, and boom, there you go. Now if I need to change spacing, it's adding too much extra space afterwards, I go back into the same place under paragraph, and I can adjust spacing before and after. If I just want it to be auto or zero. Okay, that way it's not in adding extra space between paragraphs, which is something Microsoft thinks you want, but you don't need, especially not in an academic paper. So if you're gonna be doing it yourself, your teacher gives you some special guidelines, you need to adjust margins. We should probably talk about margins. Okay. Under layout, you can go in and you can adjust your margins, change your sizes, or you can make it custom, right? Okay, so uh, I've had teachers ask me to do all these things in the past, and maybe you've done it as well. But these are all the basics that you need. Um, we've talked about how to double space. We've talked about how to add a header or a page number that duplicates on the multiple pages. I can show you right here what that would look like. Control Enter makes a new page. Okay, so here you see how it, it updated, yeah. Okay, we talked about how to do hanging indentation, how to do justify uh, center and right, how to hit tab. Um, we talked a little bit about Grammarly and uh, spell check. So those are all important things. Oh, maybe your teacher tells you you need a word count. It's gonna be down here at the bottom. That's gonna tell you the whole document. If you need to search a specific um, word count for a certain paragraph, you go under review and you're gonna be able to click right here, word count. Anything that's selected, it'll tell you how many words it is. Well, I chose one word, so it says one word. Make sense? All right, I hope that was helpful. Uh, thanks for sticking around to, to watch this. If you like videos like this, or if you have something you would like to request, please let me know, please subscribe. And uh, I try to post twice a week, um, tutorials, things like this to help you to read, write, and cite for your uh, your college classes. Uh, if you want to read more like this, you can check out my website, drlartzen.com, D-R-L-A-U-R-I-T-Z-E-N.com. And uh, I post all the videos plus blog posts, blog posts to go along with every video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.